In this video, I'll be introducing you to the names of some of the seedless vascular plants that are found at least here on Pompeii. Uh, in the center of your screen there, that's Ediantum tenurum. That's a, a fern found here on Pompeii. The ferns are also known as manilophytes. They're also known as manilophytes. That's Ediantum tenurum. In front of the Ediantum tenurum here, is Selaginella. Selaginella is not a fern technically. It's a lycophyte. Lycophytes are also known as lycopodium plants. It's a lycopodium. This particular lycopodium has the name Selaginella. Lycopodium is the broader group, uh, but the, uh, the particular plant in front of us is Selaginella. One of the terms you'll hear me talk about is pinna uh, or pinna. Bees, the, that refers to whatever the endmost part of the fern is, the green parts coming off of the, here, the little, what you might call a leaflet, are referred to as pinnae on ferns. Now these pinnae that you see here, they're smooth and nothing special. These pinnae here, if I flip this one over, you'll see that the bottoms look very different. The bottoms have sori on them. The sori are the places that produce the spores that reproduce the fern. The frond on the left is a sterile frond. It is not producing spores. The frond on the right is a fertile frond and it produces spores. The sori can be, as you see here, some sort of light green covering over the, over the sporangia where the spores are produced. Or it can be a brown or yellow circle where the spores are actually sitting on the surface. It can also be a line, a brown line as seen in the asplenium ferns. The other plants we'll be looking at, like the Selaginella, are in the Lycopodium uh, family uh, and the Selaginella family. They're all lycophytes. They're all in the broader lycopodium group. This is lycopodium. On the left is a uh, selaginella that has not yet produced the spore-producing cones that it reproduces with. And here is a piece of selaginella that has the cones. The cones on selaginella are referred to as strobili. They're strobili in plural. One would be a strobilus. Uh, and the cones in Selaginella and in the other lycopodium plants that we will meet uh, produce spores. All of these plants reproduce by spores. They have no flowers, no fruit, no seeds. Uh, the spores will generate a next generation of plants um, for these, uh, with the ferns being having their spores, pro spores produced in sori and the Selaginella and other lycopodiums in cones. To positively identify the ferns and to some extent the lycopodium plants, you must be able to see the fertile fronds. The sterile fronds, the ones without sori, do not give us good enough information to identify a uh, fern positively to a species. So. Finding the fertile fronds will be important to identifying ferns. The first fern we'll be looking at is Davalia solida. Davalia solida is commonly found on coconut trees and other trees. This here is a sterile frond. There are no sori on the bottom of the frond. To the right, you can see the same fern, Davalia solida, there. But the bottom has sori on it, the brown uh, discoloration at the tip ends of, the, of each pinna. This is the top of a fertile frond. Notice it looks different from the sterile frond. There's a more ragged, jagged look to it. You can see the inducia on the top and the bottom of the fertile frond. This is still the Valia solida, a plant known here on Pompeii as Ulungin Kiel. You will have a name for it in your language, although on Koshrai the name has been lost. 
There's another front of the Divalia Salida with the Inducia on the bottom. The next one we'll be looking at is Phymatosaurus scolopendria, known here on Pompey's Cadeau. This is a fertile frond. This is the top of the frond. Those are the tops of the sori there. If you turn it over, there's the spores in each sori. In each of those dimples are spores. The brown colored spots are the sori containing the spores. The spores are microscopic. They're, they're very, very small. This is, on the right, a uh, uh, same plant, but a sterile frond, the same, uh, the same plant. Our Phymatosaurus scolopendria. Now here we're looking at Davalia pectinata. This is the, another Davalia, Davalia pectinata. Uh, it uh, has a unique base pinnae that's different than the other pinnae. You'll see that if you look closely at the very bottom of the frond, the pinnae have a different shape. They're shaped like little pectoral fins, hence the valia pectinata. Those two little base pinnae are shaped differently, and that distinguishes this fern. It's an epiphyte. It grows on trees and only on trees. There on the bottom, you see that's a sterile frond. But if you look in the bottom of this one, that's a fertile frond. There are the sori, the brown uh, dots that mark the sporangia that uh, produce the spores for this particular one. And behind it, you can see there, of course, a, a moss. A moss is not part of the family, but it's a, a moss in the background. But that's a fertile frond for the Davalia pectinata. And with the sori, we can get an identification of that particular urn. The Valley of Salida is known on Pompeii as uh, Ulung and Kiel, sometimes confused with this, which is known as Kido here on Pompeii. And uh, the Davalia pectinata, seen here, is known as Kelmao. Part of the intent of this course is for you to learn the local names of your plants and their uses. This is a still shot of the sori on the Davalia salida for clarity, and one of the Davalia pectinata. The still shot should provide a little bit more clarity on a low bandwidth internet link. Perhaps the most primitive plant of all is uh, this nostoc. Nostoc commune, it's called. This isn't a plant at all. This is cyanobacteria. Here we see it when it's wet. It turns into a green jelly. But when the sun comes out, it dries out. Looks like a, a little black, black layer on the ground. Here on Pompeii, that's known as Prison Ketchupin. In Koshai, known as Fukon Fat. Here we see Haploterus elongata. It's a fern. It's an epiphyte growing on the sides of trees. And uh, right next to it is a, a baby Asplenium nidus, a baby bird's nest fern. You can also see moss growing on the side of the tree here. Further up this tree, you will see a member of the Lycopodium family. This is uh, Phlegmariurus phlegmaria. Previously known as Huperzia phlegmaria, but DNA analysis has been moving both the ferns and the uh, lycopodium plants uh, into other names for a variety of reasons. So this is a phlegmarius phlegmaria, uh, limpar here on Pompeii, and sometimes used as a marmar uh, by uh, dancers. So this is the, phleg, the Phlegmariurus Phlegmaria, although you'll hear me sometimes still use the name I learned it under, Huperzia Phlegmaria. Now, 
that plant reproduces by cones that are on the ends of the um, those branches. That is a sterile frond there. Here is a, a red delta, a Nephrolepis hirsutula. We'll come back to that. But those are the cones, those twin pieces, the forked pieces off the ends. The leaves on the uh, Phlegmariuris phlegmaria are called microphylls, which just means little leaves. This is hirsutula, uh, sorry, Nephrolepis hirsutula. I'm surrounded by that. That's our, probably our most common fern out there. Um, it grows both epiphytically and here on the ground. This is our uh, uh, Stefano, Stefano, uh, Stef Svero Stefanus memonensis. This particular fern, known as Maric here on Pompe, has uh, seen a number of name changes over the past 10 years. Originally Cyclosaurus. That's a sterile frond. That's a frond that has the sori. Now for the Nephrolepis, here on Pompe known as Redil, those sori have a kidney shape, and nephro means kidney in Latin. So that's where the genus name comes from. It comes from the kidney shape of the sori. The sori have a kidney shape to them. So this is Nephrolepis hirsutula, or hirsutula, uh, depending on how heavily you accent your U. And uh, found quite uh, in abundance in the, the forest here. And there's there's an attempt at a better look at the sori right at the edge of the of the pinnae, right at the very edge. The location of those sori are important. At the edge, it's hirsutula. If it's halfway uh, from the middle of the pinna to the edge, it's by serrata. Here's a little bit larger and older uh, Phlegmarius, Phlegmarius, Phlegmaria, the limpar. There are the cones. Those cones are called stroboli, uh, the singular being strobolus, uh, introduced earlier on. And that is uh, only found growing on, on trees, only epiphytic, will, will not grow on the uh, ground. <clears throat> Here we see a fern that may look at first like this Feral Stephanos memonensis, but it's not. And the key is to look at how many divisions there are. That is, how often the leaf is divided. This particular frond has a single main frond and then one division coming off of it sideways. And then the little leaf, the pinnae come off of that. So that's that's divided twice. This is a Sphero Stephanus uh, memonensis, and it's only divided once. There's a single off, and then the the uh, the uh, pinna is lobed at the edge. So pay careful attention to the number of divisions, the number of sub branchings on each front. And this here is yet another fern that is. Uh, you can see it's divided. There's, there's no division. There's just pinna on the end, so it's not divided. It's undivided. This is a tree fern. The tree fern is known as Cyathea nigricans. Currently, Cyathea nigricans, by some people's pronunciation. That's a new frond unfurling in the center of the tree fern. You can see the fronds above us. The, the the vertical is the main frond, and so it's divided once, twice, three times, and then the the pinna come off a third a third division. So it's divided th three times. Uh, quite large fronds on this particular plant. And as with all ferns, you have to have a look at a fertile frond to make a positive identification. So if we pull down one of the fertile fronds, we'll see that it has brown sori on the bottom of the pinnet. Tree ferns produce uh, a lot of spores, uh, millions if not billions of spores off of the bottoms of their, their leaves, their fronds, technically. What I'm holding, that's the main rockus of the uh, fern. And then there's a division off and another division. So it's divided three times. And then the pinna are attached on that third sub-stem. 
with the patterns uh, of the sori being uh, important to the identification, along with other features of the fern. This plant is known as kachar here on Pompeii, tukuninut in uh, Koshai. Uh, if your island has tree ferns, it will have a name. The posts are famous for their durability. They're used in traditionally as posts for anas. They are fairly resistant to termites. Here we uh, see a closer look at the uh, the uh, sori on the bottom of the leaves, and uh, a little bit closer look at the trunk of the uh, uh, tree fern. It has a very hirsute, that is hairy, appearance. This fern is Angiopteris avecta. It's a very large fern. These uh, fronds are the main rock is then a side branch, so they're they're uh, divided once and then the pinnae come off again from from the sides of the second division there. And uh, if we look at the bottom of this fern, at the very base, we'll see the structures that are characteristic of it. Uh, I'm told that sometimes ants make homes in these structures. The fronds grow straight from the ground. They do not. Uh, it does not form a trunk, but the fronds can be just as large as a tree fern frond. They look very different because they're not divided as many times as the uh, tree fern fronds are. This plant is locally known as piewood here on Pompeii. You may have a name for it on your island, and where I've, I'm aware of names, I've put them in the flora. You can look at the flora to learn those names. This uh, moderately sized fern is a splenium laser pitifolium. If you look at the uh, bottoms of these branches, you can see the sori, our line sori, characteristic of the splenium ferns. They form lines on the bottom of the leaf. This fern has, I'm holding the main rockus here, and then it's divided once, twice, even a, a third time on the, the highly lobed pinnae, which is essentially almost another one. This is a fertile frond here. Next to it here is a plant that's tentatively identified as a Splenium polyodon. This one is known as Maric and Lung on Pompeii. Here it is, Maric and Lung. Uh, it is just divided once with these very sharp lobes and very characteristic of this particular fern is the fact that the base is, there's an asymmetrical base of each pinnae so that the pinnae themselves are asymmetrical. Bring one of these into view. And if we look at the bottom, we can see where the sori will form. Uh, it will form as lines eventually. And that marks it as an asplenium, asplenium polyodon. And then next door, we have asplenium nidus, chenlik here on Pompeii. Again, there's the characteristic line like sori. It's an undivided frond. The fronds are undivided. There are no divisions in the fronds of the splenium nidus. The tips are used in soup by the by the yappies. Uh, so there's the there's a sori for the splenium nidus, and it's an epiphytic plant. It generally doesn't grow on the ground, but occasionally they will fall from a tree and then wind up becoming a terrestrial fern. But they almost always start in the air. And here where a tree has collapsed, we have a, a bunch that have landed on the ground. And so we can see the these larger fronds with their sori structures here. Over there we have the downed tree and another large Hesplenium nidus 
uh, they are laying on the ground. So all of these are in the ferns, the primitive plant family. And uh, by, oh my goodness, right there is a, a Huperzia phlegmaria that's recently begun. Right above this, uh, there we go, there's an Asplenium polyodin with the sori developed. Asplenium polyodin with the, with the sori developed. And there, the stroboli on the Huperzia phlegmaria, and behind it, the Haplotaris elongata, primitive fern, all growing very happily here along with another primitive plant, moss. Moss also produces spores. Uh, so we've got a very nice collection here in the forest around us. And the Asplenium polyodin right below us with those beautiful linear sori. And next to it, it's, it's relative Asplenium nidus, all nicely arranged. Well done have this nice collection of ferns all in one place. And if you're wondering, the ones I'm ignoring are the uh, the many red dill that are around me. The red dill, it can pull it up very easily, like that. This root structure at the bottom repels cockroaches. You just take this whole plant, the whole plant, <laughs> whole plant, fold it up, put it in a cabinet. You get about two weeks of no cockroaches in that cabinet as a result. Uh, out here we can see more back down that way. We've got another tree fern. Um, this is this is Selaginella. Selaginella is also a lycopodium plant. And the sori are contained in stroboli, which are cones which are these long, ta again, tassel-like structures at the ends. So you can see some of the similarities to another one we'll see called Huperzia phlegmaria. You can see the cones starting to form on the end of that one. And on this branch, the longer cones have already formed. Those little, it's difficult to see probably, but the uh, little, little tiny markings on the plant surface. Those are the microfills, the little leaves, if you will. It doesn't properly have leaves. It is an unusual looking plant. Very frilly sort of look to it once it develops all of those stroboli and tassels. But that's the Lagenella, and it's another one of the Lycopodium family. And that's an introduction to the See these vascular plants that are found here on Pompeii.